All right. <clears throat> well, picking up where we left off last episode, you know, we got the uh, reactor going, and um, that unlocked a whole bunch of doors. Now, we've, in theory, marked most of those doors, hopefully, on our map. I might double-check a few places just to be thorough. But, uh... And, and, you know, one thing you can't do in this town is you can't delete or, you know, grind down containers if you already search them, so... That's why you see me searching the same container several times in a row sometimes. Okay, so we're going to start out here. Let's see if there's... I think this is um, previously covered territory. That's the name of the people who live here. Yeah, it looks like we've already covered this one. So this is the building next to the club, the nightclub, I think to the west. Um... But yeah, we'll go ahead and um, go ahead and just check it out and make sure there's no locked doors that we missed or whatever, or for that matter, just you know containers that we might have missed. Um, but I don't really know if you know Luke Weaver and, and and those folks. I don't think they're that important to the story, but I just want to make sure that we didn't miss anything. Um, all right, so that's open. These are both open. Mackenzie was the detective. Um, hmm. Okay. Well, let's, um, you know, I just want to be, like, certain that the building is done, because I've done that with the uh, other building that we first started out with, and I this looks pretty familiar, too. I think we've been up here before. I wonder who that is. You know, I, there's some corpses where it's very clear who it is, and there's others that are not. And so I'm really curious, like, who ended up where. But it looks to me like this building building is pretty well done from before we unlock the reactor. So let's go over here to the, um, well, and that's building A, I think. Yeah, here we go. So let's just start checking these off, because I can tell easily which doors we uh, we completed. There we go. Got to get the uh, saturation and such correct, but... Uh, There we go. So that indicates doors four and seven were checked out. That's probably Governor Benton and Marcus Krauss that were locked. Um, let's just go over here and check out this building. I'm pretty sure these doors were locked previously as well. This is the Acosta family. So we'll see if they have anything important to contribute. There's an airlock there. We have not been in here before check out the uh, place here. We've got some power cells and medical equipment, which are very valuable items. And I'm just offloading a few things there so we can not have to worry about inventory. Okay, so there's the kitchen. You know, these like single family dwellings as opposed to the apartments are kind of cool. They're uh, done in a slightly different style, kind of a dark wood style, simulated wood, I assume. All right, and here is a locker with a pad. Let's check it out. Email, new message from Harada. Please don't ask why, just get your mother and meet me at the caves in the following location. So it gives us a cave that the Acosta family may have escaped to, okay. So that was a very urgent message from Mr. Acosta. We'll go ahead and mark that on our map. And here's another pad. New message from Chief Researcher Camilla Dever. It's hopeless. I can't think straight and cons or, or concentrate anymore. We are already beyond uh, saving. All I can think of is how to try to neutralize this whole area before the fungus spreads to the point where it is, the whole planet is beyond saving. And please, don't ask the opinion of my husband, Aaron Davenport. 
He, being the optimist, will fight until the end, and believe me, you don't want your family to end up like that. I'm asking a lot here, but I presume you still ha comprehend how serious this could get. I know that the reactor can't be straight up turned into a nuclear bomb, but could you set it so that it will begin leaking radioactivity that could neutralize the whole valley eventually? We do, n we do, not we do need to make sure no help arrives before the radiation has done its job. I presume Marcus Krauss could still help. Okay, so this is Camilla Davenport's attempt to save the colony. He's having Acosta sabotage the nuclear reactor and having Krauss shut down communications. Presumably, when Acosta got that message, that's when he told his family to go meet him at the cave. Because he had to go in and, you know, sabotage the nuclear power plant. So that's a big part of the story there, too. Is that Acosta is the man who uh, sabotaged the plant. Uh, for good reason. So we can go ahead and uh, move on from that building. And we'll just drive this to our next destination right over here. More or less. Okay. And we'll walk over to this building here. Okay, so this building is the Davenport family. So that's Camilla, the researcher who basically saved everybody in, on the planet. There's a body over there next to the wall. Hopefully it's not Camilla. Uh, airlock on the house. We haven't been in here before. We get a level two drill there. I'll take a look back here, see if we can find a pad. Medical components, which is, you know, would have been helpful if we were trying to build, you know, like a med bay or something, but, uh, all right, so let's check over here. Looks like an office. Okay, and there is not a pad in there. Okay. So no pad yet. You would think there would be a pad, by the way. This is arguably one of the, certainly one of the top five most important people in the colony. We do have a button panel, which is interesting. I think it's designed to kind of make that desk look more interesting, but you know, it's not programmed, it would appear. A little bedroom over here with a locker. There's a pad. Okay, let's read it. And this is Aaron Davenport, Access Street. I think I've been sitting here writing this for hours, but it could as well be days. Hard to tell. A moment of sanity yesterday, maybe. I think I tried to enter the research lab. Who knows how many times I've tried that before, but it's locked. Trying to remember. It hurts, and yet I feel nothing. I don't care what happened to my wife and daughter. I don't care about anything. My head just hurts so much. I'll take a small break in the pool outside. Maybe some cold water will wake me up a bit. Okay, so he went swimming. He was writing this. He wanted to get into the research lab. I think he was trying to access his wife out there. Camilla, but he was not successful. It's locked. He doesn't remember why. So he went out to take a swim in the pool, and I'm afraid I'm afraid that's probably his body over there. I'm afraid this is this is how he ended up. Well, that is a helpful bit of information, but not crucial to the puzzle. Let's go down to the next house over here and see what is going on over here. This house is got it's got this red warning thing on it. I remember that. Quarantine in effect. Request access from research lab. Zhang family, Hirako Asako, and somebody else. And I, I imagine this is, you know, when we were first sent in, we got a message from one of the Zhangs, I think, and that's where we initially went in our vehicle that research outpost was the last known location of Hiroko Zhang. So, we'll go ahead and uh, check a couple of these off the list here, kind of keeping track of our locked doors. Um, all right. Let's check out yeah, we've already been through here. 
I don't think there were any locked doors in here, the restaurant. Um, Sarah's Fine Dining. I would love to eat here. It looks delicious. Um, but I digress. Um, yeah, no locked doors in here, so nothing much to see in there. Um, but maybe over here in this building, there might have been something. Uh, I don't remember. I think this is just another residential building, right? So, oh, I missed that first door, but... Okay, this is the Ortiz family. We've already checked in there. But just to kind of double check... You know, just, oops, uh, just to make sure we got everything. I'm just kind of taking a poke around to make sure we have indeed searched these places. This is another... Oh, there's actually there's something we missed here. Well, I'm glad we double-checked. This is Anna Garza. I'll leave it... I'll leave to visit Carcosa Valley in a few days, and since the last visit was so inspiring, might even stay a few years this time. This should give me a nice opportunity to complete my new trilogy of books. I feel completely confident leaving you in charge of the restaurant. Remember to keep quality high and prices low. So it's Seraph Ramsey to his assistant, Anna Garza. Um... So he was going to leave the valley to go the next one over. Um, Seraf, that is, the restaurant owner. And he sent that note to his assistant. And I must have missed it just initially because there's like three lockers in this one. So that's interesting. So you wonder if he was outside of the valley when the fungal infection broke out. I don't know. But I'm glad I checked that again because I, I love filling in the bits and pieces of the puzzle. And knowing that the restaurant owner was actually out of the out of the colony, or at least was planning to be, when this whole thing started, um, is really interesting to know. Okay. I love those simulated elevator shafts, by the way. We're coming into the AGI building now, and we've explored this building before, but a lot of it was locked off. So we'll see what we can find this time. This door was locked. This is Dr. Aaron Davenport. Now, this is the guy who uh, died next to a swimming pool. Here's his little desk. Let's see if there's anything in here. Yeah, there's another pad. Gravity components. Uh, we need to empty our inventory real quick. Let's go do that and then come right back. All right, I'm back. This is the opening the entrance to the building from the ground, and I just uh, put all my stuff in my uh, car, and I'm going to try and make my way back up to where I was, I think, but uh, maybe kind of try to keep track of the layout of this building as I go here. Once we get up here, yeah, I think it was through here somewhere where we were. Uh, the doctor, Dr. Aaron Davenport, okay. So this is the husband of Camilla, and uh, we had just started looking at this locker, I think, yes. Okay, so now we can finally uh, get stuff. From Maria Velasco Waste Treatment Facility. Forget about it. I won't be sending any more down there in the sewers looking for people to go down there to die. Your wife tells us that we will all end up like that, as a rotting pile of flesh consumed by some sort of fungus that then grows from you, spreading more of itself. I'll end, up, end it when my memory is still intact. Forget about it. I won't be sending anyone. Damn it. Damn it all. So that's from Mario, or Mario Velasquez, the waste facilities person, to Aaron Davenport. And there was maybe a request to send people down to the sewers where all the bodies were. And that request was denied based on the advice of Camilla, this doctor's wife, who basically said, you know, this fungus is spreading, be careful. And I've, in theory, already looked through this the originally accessible office there. So... That should take care of this entire floor, I think, although there is a door over there on the right, but looks like we've already done that one. So let's uh, cross this one off the list here. And, you know, we're doing our system of turning it blue or whatever color that is. Um, all right, and we've already been in here, but just to kind of double check, that looks like it goes up to the roof, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So we've already explored that. Um, it looks like we... I'm sure we've already explored all the rest of this as well, but uh, 
just to be thorough, I'll double check real quick. This looks to be the police station area. And yeah, we've definitely explored here before. In fact, you know, I, I suppose the designers of this scenario laid out the entire place. You know, it's kind of ingenious. They laid out the uh, buildings with part of it accessible and part of it not accessible from the beginning of, and that applies to at least three of these buildings down here, which means they're telling the story sequentially through unlocking the second part of the building. And rather than just, you know, unlocking the entire building or, you know, assuming you'll look at everything together. No, they assume you'll look at these things separate. They assume you'll look at the things that are accessible first and then do the other part later. Okay, so now we can go in here. This is the security section of the building. This was not accessible before. And this says reception. Okay. Well, we got a locker. Medical supplies. Got some... Uh, closet space here, just a basic gun, nothing in that one, soda machine, etc, conveyor, and what's, here's the jail and armory, okay, so that was reception, now we're in the jail slash armory section, and let's take a look here first, this is the armory, okay, you know, for a colony of like, 80 people. It's kind of funny they have a full-blown armory. But they've got a list of uh, weapons here and ammo it looks like. We've got some ammo. Some, you know, ship ammo. Elite gun, or a uh, marksman's rifle. and Again, these are using the pre-warfare uh, DLC uh, blocks and things. But let's just see what else we got. we got some hand ammunition and some basic guns. We could scrap those later if we need, if we can, if we uh, get a chance. Some rapid fire uh, guns as well. And there's an elite rifle. That's what we like to see. Okay. We've already looked in there, and that's the armory. Now this presumably descends then into the jail. There's a little desk here. Nothing in the boxes. Um, let's see, that one is locked still. And there is something, it looks like a corpse in there. Um, let's see, is there a button I can use to unlock these doors? Okay, let's check them out now. Yeah, there we go, we unlocked them. Very clever game. Okay, so there's a corpse in this one. Not sure who would have been in jail, specifically. I know that there would have been some people who are involved in crime um, in the area, but we know that Frankie, the crime boss, was definitely not in jail at the time of the uh, infection. So who knows, honestly, who that is. It might have said on the button panel. And actually, the button panel just says gov hyphen cell 1 and cell 2, so it doesn't say who's in there. It just says... And GOV gov might be a reference to the governor, or it might be government. Um, but either way, it doesn't shed light on who's actually in there, I don't think. Okay, so we're turning the corner around to this area behind the jail cells. And it's not clear if this is still part of the jail or what. Oh, you know what, this is the way back up, it looks like. Yeah, this is just the back door to the jail from a different part of the building, it looks like. Okay, so that's all closed off. That's all completed. Um, and then I think if we go back up these stairs, we actually end up to back to the front door. Front door of the jail. Now this area over here we've explored before, it would appear. Yeah, so um, I'm just trying to trying to get a sense of where I am. But I think this goes back, yeah, to the front door of the jail. That's where we just were through there. Okay. And now we can go off to the left. Right, there's the entrance to the building. I guess I'll put my stuff away real quick. All right, back into the building we go. And we just did the jail there. So now we can do this one. And that's the garage. Okay, let's check out the garage. That, that sounds very interesting. 
slightly concerned about turrets here. This seems like it would be the one place where conceivably turrets could be in this building. There's a hydrogen uh, engine here. Battery next to it. And uh, some crates with some power power cells and construction components. And these are bays with, ooh, um, looks to be security like vehicles, like police cars. Uh, one with a turret on top, that's very interesting and could have been really useful earlier. Um, some ammo, okay, very good. And they're not connected, probably by design. And this one doesn't seem to have a turret. But we can go ahead and open, oh yeah, we can open these garages. I think I remember seeing the garages out there before. Uh, those are the connector controls there. And then um, another, some medical supplies and power cells. Can't carry them all. And uh, an assembler over here randomly. And we can turn that on if we wanted to, but uh, it failed, so I don't think it matters. It's, I think it's cosmetic. Yeah, so the one on the left, or on our right, had a uh, turret, so that would have been really handy. You know, going into some of the more hostile areas of this. We'll go ahead and put our stuff away again. Okay, and here we are back in the garage. I'm just getting the remainder of the stuff that I couldn't get earlier. And I really do think I might want to take this turret vehicle with me because I still sense there are dangers out there waiting to be discovered. Oh, there's the power cells. Okay. So, I do kind of want to take that. But I think, and I'm not sure if it makes sense to take it now because I've got everything loaded in the other vehicle. Um, but just double checking these lockers. Okay, I think we're good there. So that's the garage. That was the uh, jail. The jail double connects down here uh, at the end of that hallway. But to the left is the area that we had previously gone to. And I think it was the medical and research areas that we're about to go to here. Um, yeah, there's the jail and the armory sign, elevator, etc. Okay, so let's, um, having thoroughly exhausted the other options, let's now go into this area. And, uh, okay, so that, this is the medical area. We do have a medical bay there. We can get our energy back real quick. We can respawn there if we ever need to. This is, toggles the medical room. I think across the way, perhaps. Who knows? Uh, a couple lockers here. So we've already explored just very briefly in here before. Uh, and same with this. So these are nothing new. And there's the elevator. The simulated ele elevator, I should say. And we're just kind of poking around to see if there's anywhere that we haven't been yet. You know, we've um, been in here. I remember this room. I remember this right next to the stairs with the window there. Okay, and it looks like maybe over here somewhere. Yeah, I, re I remember this room too. Okay, well, um, not a lot of, of new things to explore in here. But let's check down here see where these go. This is the Morgan Research Lab authorized personnel only and the Cyro or Cryo Lab. Let's check the Cryo Lab first. I, now I don't remember being in here. I could I could just simply be misremembering it. But it doesn't look like there's a lot going on in here. So let's check the uh, medical lab. This look this does look familiar. I think I have been in this specific room before. And that would seem to be the case, although there's some oxygen that we didn't get before. There's some fungus and 
it looks like maybe they were looking into they're doing some tests on the on the fungus oh yeah so there's stuff in these boxes i don't think we may have been in the room before we i don't necessarily think we made it down to this level before because we wouldn't have left all that stuff in those boxes if we had been down in this level before Okay, just being thorough here. Okay, there is a dead body. That could be one of the researchers, or it could, could be damn near anybody, really. All right, we'll get out of this little pit. And let's check this. This is the research labs for authorized personnel only. Come back to there in a second. Now that's where we came from, from the stairs there. Let's check this side out first. Now this has a red warning. Quarantine in effect, request access from research lab, and there's the morgue. Okay, so in order to get into the morgue, we have to get into the research lab and open it up, I guess. And that's where we came from. So let's go to the research lab now. This should be very, very fascinating. Got a closet here, nothing in there. Probably where they hang their lab coats. They really needed to have added another block there. Okay, I got a couple of closed doors. Let's check this side out first. Okay, got a couple of cargo containers. Nothing in them. Okay, very good. That's checked off. Bathroom. Okay. And then this one says research lab and office. Let's start out at the top. So there's a box with a pad. Dr. Camilla Davenport. The fungus and its spores have spread everywhere. All of us in Sunset Valley have been ingesting them among our food as well as breathing the air that contains the spores. We have been doing this for years now for all I know. The symptoms began to surface only in the later stages, and then, now, there's nothing that can be done anymore. We must make sure it doesn't spread to other colonies. I'll try to contract Gerardo Acosta. Maybe he can sabotage the nuclear reactor to leak radioactivity. That could possibly neutralize the fungus. I will also contact Marcus Krauss. Uh, we need to make sure help doesn't arrive before the fungus is neutralized. So that's just Camilla Davenport explaining her plan. Have Acosta sabotage the reactor and have Krauss sabotage the, the comms equipment. We've discovered that elsewhere in this playthrough before, but that's just confirmation of what we already knew. Level 3 welder, very nice. And here's another pad. This is Camilla Davenport number 2. Life cycle of the fungus. Stage 1. The early stages will slowly circulate around the body and without any noticeable effects and will even accumulate in the host brain. Stage 2. After slowly accumulating in the host brain, the symptoms start to resemble short-term memory loss. It was at this stage we realized something was wrong. Stage 3. Not long after that, the host will become apathetic to the point where even basic survival instincts mostly shut down. The host will search for a warm and humid location and will eventually perish. Stage 4. During the last stage, the fungi will decompose the host and form fruiting bodies which will release new spores. Very interesting. Okay, that appears to be the entirety of the research lab on that side. Let's check this thing out. This is the control room. Maybe we'll be able to give ourselves access to the morgue from in here. Uh, maybe. There's some sort of... Uh, the following location being quarantined. Uh, the morgue and the Zhang family house have been quarantined. Okay. So we just push that button. You know, and that button said quarantine on it, so I think it maybe releases the quarantine. So we'll see if that opens up the morgue or the Zhang house. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, that button just said morgue, or uh, not morgue, uh, quarantine. Um, so I wonder if pushing it will release the morgue and the uh, other quarantine place, the Zhang residence. Here's the test chamber. Blast of air, and there's the uh, lab coat rack, and looks to be a power washing station. And here they're using a safe zone block. I think it's deconstructed a bit. Very creative use. It's made to look like a test chamber for the fungus, I assume. So it's pretty cool uh, how they use that here. Very creative. I love that they are telling this story using the interesting blocks of. Um, Space engineers. Here's some stuff in here. There's a body there. I wonder if that's um, Camilla Davenport. I mean, she's the one who's in this lab leaving all the... Yep, here's the PDA number three from her. So I bet you that is her. Lab notes. At this point, I've been feeling stage three symptoms myself for some time. I try to compile my findings when I still can. I know we have a patient zero, Dr. Azoko Shang, that's interesting, uh, in the morgue with her belongings. But I am locked into the research lab, so that's definitely Camilla Davenport. 
since we uh, lost power from the reactor. I have tried to send an email to my, for my husband for anybody, but no one is answering. I guess Marcus Krauss managed to disable the comm tower. We have quarantined the Zhang residence too, but in hindsight, we should have probably inspected the house. I have the feeling that these corporate people had something to do with this whole mess. At least we managed to sabotage the reactor and disable uh, communications. Did I say that already? Oh well. Well, I do hope no one comes looking for us. No one else needs to suffer our fate. And then she gives the GPS for the morgue entrance, um, sending us to Azoko Zhang, I think, basically, uh, who's patient zero. That's really interesting. You know, uh, we were sent looking for the corporate representative Hiroko Zhang, I think. So this relative of that person is patient zero for the fungus. That's just, that's got to be more than a coincidence. And this body here, it's definitely Camilla Davenport. She locked herself in the lab. It's right next to her pad. She wrote the pads in sequence. This is the third out of three. She already contacted Acosta and Kraus, and there she lays to rest. So I think that's a good place to leave it off. What a mystery. What a great story. Um, we're going to leave it here, and uh, I'll pick it up here next time on Space Engineers The Lost Colony. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next one.